Hypothetically, we could deploy this smart contract right now. This is a valid contract, although it doesn't do anything. But congratulations, technically, with just this little piece of code, you've written your first smart contract. I spelt version wrong, so we're gonna correct that. Solidity has many different types of things that you can build in these smart contracts. Many different data types or just types. If you go to the Solidity documentation at docs.soliditylang.org, again, link to this in the GitHub, we can select the types section on the left-hand side to learn more about Solidity types. If you wanna get a holistic view of all the different types, you can go ahead and read this documentation. Some of the basic types are going to be Boolean, Boolean, Uint, and an address, and bytes. Bytes is a lower level type, which we'll talk about in a little bit. A Boolean is some type of true false value. A Uint is going to be an unsigned integer, AKA a positive whole number, meaning no decimals, no fractions. A integer is going to be a signed whole number, meaning it could be positive or negative, but again, is a whole number. And then we have an address, which is going to be, well, an address. It's very similar to if we open up our MetaMask and we click this account here, it's gonna be something like this. There are some other types as well and ways to create your own custom types, but we'll learn more about that later on. We can use these different types to define different variables. Variables are essentially holders for different values, and these values can have one of these types. For example, we could create a variable called has favorite number, which would represent if somebody has a favorite number. This has favorite number could be true or false. Either they do have a favorite number or they don't. To tell Solidity that this has favorite number is a true false or a Boolean, we would add this bool keyword before has favorite number. So this has favorite number is gonna be either true or false. And to set its value, we're gonna give it this little equal sign and say true. So now has favorite number is a variable that represents true. We could also say has favorite number is false, meaning that somebody doesn't have a favorite number. For a uint, which again is an unsigned integer, we could say uint favorite number equals 88. This means that this variable favorite number is going to be 88. A uint and int are actually special in that we can actually specify how many bits or bytes that we want to use. For example, we could say uint 256. uint 256 specifies this variable favorite number has 256 bits. We're not going to go over bits and bytes in depth right now. But if you want to get a quick refresher, we've left a link in the GitHub repo associated with this course to give you an overview of bits versus bytes and how they work. An easier way to think about this is really just how big can it get? The bigger the number over here, the bigger this favorite number can be. The maximum size is a uint 256. And if you don't specify the uint 256, it defaults to being a uint 256. So this and this are the same thing. This, this, same thing. We could also have eight bits, 16 bits, 64 bits, et cetera. Oftentimes it's better when we're writing our code for a readability standpoint to be as explicit as possible. So you'll see me pretty much always writing UN 256 because I wanna be very explicit with how many bits I'm using for UN 256, even though they mean the same thing. Instead of a UN 256, we could also have this be an int 256. And actually let's add that Boolean back up here. Now an int can actually be positive or negative. So we could have our favorite number be negative 88 if we wanted to. We can also have strings or text variables, which I didn't name up here, but I'll say why in just a minute. We could say string favorite number in text equals 88. And let's actually make this positive 88, even though an int could be positive or negative. I'll put this little semicolon here. You'll notice that at the end of every one of these lines, I'm adding this semicolon. The semicolon is how you can tell Solidity that a statement has completed. So this semicolon is saying the end of this line is right here. If we wanted to, we could put all of our code on the same line like this, and this would compile fine. It just looks really ugly. So we always wanna put our code on a new line after the semicolon. A string in Solidity is basically text that represents, well, words. So I could say, 88 instead of having 88 in here. To tell Solidity that something is a string, you have to put it in between quotes. I could put really any combination of characters in here, even like hello, or follow Patrick on Twitter. And let's actually do you in 256 here, favorite number, and we'll do an int 256 favorite int equals negative 88. This way we'll just have an example of all these different types on screen. We can also do an address. So we can say address 
my address equals, and we can go into our MetaMask, copy the address, and paste it right into Remix, and add that semicolon. And now we have our address type in Remix. And then finally down here, we're gonna say a bytes32 object, faithful with bytes32 equals cat, and we're gonna put it in quotes, just like we did the string up here. And what's interesting about the string object is that strings are actually secretly just bytes objects specifically for text. So a string can actually get converted to a bytes object really easily because under the hood, they're essentially the same thing. Bytes typically look like something like Xerox and then a whole bunch of random numbers and letters that represent the hex of whatever the bytes is and can often be represented as strings like cat. We'll talk about bytes more in the future. Similar to uint 256 and int 256, you can have different size bytes, like bytes two, bytes, bytes four, bytes eight, etc., all the way up to 32. You can also have just straight up bytes and not have a number after, but that's a slightly different type and we'll go over that later as well. A uint like this and a uint 256 are the same thing, but a bytes 32 and a bytes with nothing are actually different. So keep that in mind for now. The largest bytes, like I was saying, is actually 32. So for example, we can't do a bytes 64. And if we type that in here, Remix actually goes, hey, there's an issue here. And if we try to compile this, and we scroll down, we'll again see this little error code here and this little error pop up. It even gives us an output declaration error, identifier not found or not unique. It gives us the line and we can say, ah, whoops a daisy, this should be a bytes 32. And we can go back and compile this. For our simple storage contract, let's say that we only want to store a favorite number. This contract is going to be a contract that allows us to store our favorite number and some different people's favorite numbers as well. So we're going to go ahead and delete everything except for the uint 256 favorite number. So we're going to go ahead and delete everything and boom. And we'll pick a smaller favorite number just to make it a little mentally easier. Now these variables actually have default values. So for example, if I don't set my favorite number to anything, and I have a line that looks like this, you'll see that this actually compiles fine. Favorite number will actually get defaulted to zero, and all of these types have a different default value. UN256 is zero, Booleans is false, etc. So saying UN256 favorite number and not having an equal sign after here is the same as doing UN256 favorite number equals zero. So for now, let's not initialize it to anything, so that favorite number starts off as zero. And remember, as you're coding along here and typing along with me, if you get confused, make sure to write your own comments. For example, we can say favorite number gets initialized to zero if no value is given. 